morning and happy Easter. This is just our We're Starting Church song to remind the people in the hallways. So happy Easter and uh, we're well happy you're here. How can it be the one who died has borne our sin through sacrifice to conquer every sting of death? Sing, sing hallelujah.
when we lose hope. When we forget. There may be days when we deny. I don't know him. When our faith loses its footing. You have me confused. I don't know him. And we stumble along our way. I said I don't know him! been found what has been defeated what has been forgiven what was once dead has new life What was once old has been made new. What was once finite has been made eternal. May we remember and follow the risen way. He is risen. I want to welcome you to our Resurrection Sunday service. The microphone went dead. The microphone went dead. Is it on now? No. Thank you, Valerie. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, I apologize if you can't hear me this morning quite yet. Uh, welcome everybody. I'm excited about today. Not only is it Easter Sunday, but we're having three baptisms today. Um, Pam Tom, uh, Holden Patience, and Jason Tan are all being baptized this morning. And I've visited with each one of these folks. and. I'm confident in their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I've asked uh, three folks to uh, accompany me to assist here in the baptistry today. Uh, people who have been significant and are committed in walking with each one of these folks. So Heather Attrell, a friend of Pam's, is, is going to come and assist with Pam. Um, and then Jaden Worth, our youth worker here at the church is going to come and assist me with Holden and then Alvin Tan, Jason's dad. And this is a very significant day for, for uh, Alvin because it's the 10th anniversary of when he was baptized. So what an exciting day. And so I um, want to welcome you. Let me pray and then uh, we've got some video uh, to show you uh, as we begin our service today. So Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Thank you for the resurrected Jesus who gives us new life and eternal life. And Father, these baptisms today are a testimony to the new life that you breathe into us as followers of Jesus. God, and I pray that uh, you would speak to our hearts today. Help us, to, um, help us just to be excited and look forward to, uh, to life in a new way as we walk with Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.
I'm here with Pam Tom today, and I'm excited. Pam has come um, to be asked to be baptized, and I'm excited about that. I've known Pam for a few months now. I think she's been part of FBC since September, and so yeah. uh, I'm this here with Pam, and I just want to have her share a little bit about her her faith journey and uh, what baptism maybe means for her. And and uh, yeah, so Pam, do you want to just share a little bit about? Sure. Who you are and, you, and how you came to faith in Christ. and yeah. I didn't grow up with much of a religious background, very basic, very minimal. And I've had ups and downs in my life and just something this summer just, I felt like I was missing something and I just felt drawn and coming here and just feeling like the closeness and the like I was missing God in my life. I've missed him and he's become a friend to me. He's become a part of who I am and it's made me feel lighter and has answered questions and shown me as far as whatever battles I have aren't anything compared to like what he's forgiven and other issues before for people and what people have been through. It's amazing. Great. And I know you've shared with me before that you've been through through some difficult times in your life yeah. and um, you know how God has helped you through that and yeah. uh, what, what difference has your faith made in your life Pam? It's given me a companion. It's given me a friend. It's given me a lighter me. It's made me feel more at peace with myself. Okay, great. So you have put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and yes. Savior, right? And today you're coming to be baptized and you understand that baptism isn't what saves you. It's your faith in Christ that saves you. And your baptism today is an expression of that inward faith. And it's a, it's a symbol of, of your sin being washed away, right? And you are a new creation in Christ. Yeah. And as you're raised out of the water, it's that, you know, that's the symbol of, of being raised to new life in Christ. And so um, I'm excited today to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in front of your church family and looking forward to seeing uh, how you're, you're going to continue to grow in your faith and blossom in Christ. So congratulations, Pam, Thank you. Um, on your baptism today. Thank you. I look forward to it. Great. Well, folks, this is Pam, and uh, Pam, let me ask you just one more time. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. And it's my pleasure, Pam, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm here with Holden Patience today, and uh, I've known Holden for two or three years now, and he's been a member of our youth group and has been coming to First Baptist for a while and um, off and on. And so, uh, Holden, I'm, I'm excited that you've come to be asked to be baptized. And I just want to have a little visit with you, and uh, maybe you want to share a little bit about your faith journey and, and uh, you know, when you made a commitment to be a follower of Jesus. And, yeah, so just share a little bit with me. Um... I went to Oceanside Church since at least I was eight years old. Had a couple, you know, big things happen there. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID happened, we kind of just didn't know where to go. Right. And I went with Jake to this church. And that is when I really felt like, you know, God called me. Okay. And then that few years after I had people pass away and then felt like that was a really good time for God to show me you know what he can do and he helped me through he comforted me great yeah. great and so you said earlier was around grade six when you really when your faith became kind of real for you and you feel like um, you know that's when you became a follower of Jesus, is that right? Yeah, grade yeah. six was the big year for me, because that's okay. when I started going to music, I think. Right, and you were reading your Bible more yeah. and really understood who Jesus yeah. was, right? And so, yeah, great. And so, um, you know, you are a follower of Jesus. You've put your faith in Him as your Lord and Savior, is that right? Yep. Yeah, and so what does baptism mean to you then, Holden? I think it's just a way for showing, you know, that you're committed and 
you want to follow Jesus, and it's like the next big step, I think, in yeah. my faith life. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it is a, it's an outward expression of your inward faith, then, right? Yeah. And so, um, how has your faith made a difference in your life? I think I would sometimes, you know, if someone passed away, I wouldn't know how to feel. And I think now that I've had a stronger faith, I can kind of, you know, rely on someone and that someone is God and I can feel him, you know, helping me out. Great. So you can you can sense God's presence yeah. in your life when you're going through difficult yeah. times. Yeah. That's great. Well, Holden, um, so you are a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yep. right? Well, based on your testimony, Holden, I'm pleased to baptize you uh, here at First Baptist Church. Congratulations. Of course, this is Holden in person. Uh, and Holden, let me just uh, confirm with you, you are a believer in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Yes, you are. Well, based on your testimony, I am pleased to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm here with Jason Tan this afternoon, and uh, Jason has been coming to the church for a while now, I think, and I've just gotten to know him. Uh, I visited with Jason last week and his mom and dad, and Jason has asked to be baptized, and I'm excited about that. Um, and so as we talked about baptism last week, Jason, one of the questions I asked is, are you a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And you told me that you were, right? Yes. Yeah, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and so you want to be baptized in front of your church family as an expression of your faith and a commitment that, that you're willing to follow Jesus for the rest of your life, right? Yes. Great. And I know that your mom and dad are supporting you in this. Um, they, they know you probably better than anyone, and they have told me, uh, along with yourself, that you have made a commitment to Jesus, and you've been learning about Jesus in Sunday school, and at home with your mom and dad and uh, so you realize that that baptism isn't what saves you but it's your faith in Christ right yes and that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and and you're forgiven that you are a new creation a child of God and uh, so you understand those things right yes good well Jason um, because of your your testimony your belief in Jesus as your Lord and Savior then I'm excited to uh, to have you baptized today uh, here in front of your church family. So congratulations. <laughs> this is Jason and his dad, Alvin. And Jason, um, have you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you promise to follow him for the rest of your life? Yes. Yes, then Jason, I'm pleased to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, let's celebrate together and stand and sing about the Lord. We're going to sing. The chorus from Lord I lift your name on high, you came from heaven to earth to show the way, the thing that these three people are celebrating and agreeing with, we're going to agree with in song together. You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my death to pay, from the cross to the grave.
You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross.
How gorgeous was that, hey? One more time for the handbell fire, yay. Uh, we are so blessed in our church with so many talented people. Well, it is now time for the kids' time to shine. So boys and girls, I would like you to stand up nice and tall right where you are, good. We're gonna to have to have a little imagination station going on here today. As you can tell, we've got a little construction going on. So the highway down the middle is a no-go zone. And up at the front, well, we got a lot of stuff going on here too. So what you're gonna to need to do is go to the outside. You're gonna to have to be very polite and say excuse me to all the people beside you and sneak past them, yes. And you're gonna come down the outside and then you're gonna come up, okay? all the way around and then come up to front. Perfect, have a seat. Look at you, come on, don't be shy. So exciting, there's too many for the stairs, Val. We have to build a bigger church. Yes. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, look how pretty and how handsome you all are. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. There's lots of room. We're all friends in Christ. We can sit nice and close. Come on. Good job. All right. Yeah, there's lots of room down here. Come on, sweetheart. She brought her friend with her today. Super nice. Oh, you got it for Easter? So nice. You're lucky. All right. Couple more. Keep coming down. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Wow. If you folks could all just see them right now, they are just so precious. They are so precious, aren't they? Well, you know what? Yes, I said it is your guys' time to shine, and it is. But first, I have to ask you. Does anybody know why we're here today? Like, we know it's church, but what are we celebrating? You want to tell me? Easter. Easter. It's, what is it? Easter. It's Easter, that's right. And, and today, though, it's a special day with Easter. Do we know what happened today? Jesus rose from the dead. That's right. And how exciting is that? Yes, he rose to the dead for us, for us. How awesome is that? So you know what? I'm going to ask you. You're going to repeat after me. I'm going to say he is risen. And what are you going to say? He is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Yes. How wonderful is that? So exciting. Well, you know what? Let's close our eyes and fold our hands. Our Sunday school teachers are waiting. Super, super excited for you. I know they're waiting for you. So let's close our eyes. Are you ready? Dear Jesus, we just thank you for these boys and girls. They are just so precious in our sight and yours. Uh, we are grateful for each one and for those that couldn't be here today. Uh, we pray for them as well. We pray now that um, they go off to Sunday school. They learn about you and um, they just hide their word in your heart so that they may know you forever and ever. We thank you for each one. In your precious name we pray, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Excellent. Amen. Amen, yes. All right, now nice and slow. Let's all head down here so we don't knock our friends, and we're going to head out this way. Good job. Good job. No touching the bells, please. Thank you. Kara's starting to sweat. It's okay, we got it. Perfect. Oh, everyone looks so nice. Mums too. Singers too. Yes. Perfect. Super. Do we have, yeah, we, there we go. Awesome. So once again, good morning. And he has risen. Uh, amen to that. Uh, it was like 22 years ago to this day when the Holy Spirit came into my life and opened my eyes. So it's Easter for me is extra special. My family will tell you, yes, mom tells us the story every year. But it's a good story. It really, really is. Um, anyways, welcome to all those worshiping, uh, worshiping with us here in person and online. Good morning. Glad to have you. Um, this morning, if you are wanting to uh, give a tithes and offerings, which, yes, thank, thank you so much for all of you that do give thank, um, thankfully all the time. <sighs> 
faithfully is the word I was trying to say, faithfully. Um, but maybe you're here this morning and you would like to give an offering. In the pew in front of you is a little envelope. Feel free, place your offering in there and just place it in the jar on the table where you entered into um, the sanctuary. Also in the pew in front of you is a little connections card, great little card. If you're visiting with us today, uh, we invite you to complete this connections card and um, place any prayer requests on there, any questions you may have, and I know one of our staff members would be glad to get back to you as soon as possible, and you can place that also in the jar on the table where you entered in. And also tonight, uh, we have a call to prayer. Um, you are welcome to join our prayer team at 6 p.m. here at the church as we pray for our church ministries, our families, and our community. A newcomer's lunch, super fun event for those of you that are new to our church. Uh, we invite everyone who is new, yes, uh, to the newcomer's meet and greet next Sunday, April 16th at 11.30 a.m. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer on the connections board if you wouldn't mind filling that out. That would be great. And we're having a memorial service for, uh, to celebrate the life of our dear Edgar uh, Barrent. It will be held this Tuesday on April 11th at 1 p.m. And seniors, all adults, 55 and plus, are welcome to join. And I was like, I was reading this. And, You're welcome to join us. Well, no, I'm not quite there yet. So you can join Ginny and all her lovely friends. Yes, for Ginny, you can join them uh, for a time of tea and coffee and fellowship on Wednesday, April 19th at 10 a.m. Uh, the special feature for this month is Lifeline. This is Canada's most trusted medical alert system. So good, go and learn about that. And one last announcement I have is um, our church is looking for some church members who may be interested in attending the CBWC Assembly in Calgary on June 1st to 3rd. Um, and if you're interested in serving as a delegate, please let Judy Anderson know. Otherwise, thank you. We again have the opportunity to <coughs> excuse me, uh, come together before our God in prayer. Will you join me? Our God and our Father, today is a day of celebration. We celebrate the risen Christ. He is our Savior, our Lord, and he rose from the grave. That we as a church can meet together and serve you and celebrate. <coughs> We celebrate the three people who were committed themselves to you, Lord, in baptism. We thank you for Pam, Holden, and Jason. And we pray that they would walk with you for the rest of their life and not wander from the path that you set before them. We celebrate our Sunday school, our children. Lord, we have 69 children registered for Sunday school, and uh, we need helpers. We need teachers, helpers, to help them to get to know you, that they would turn their life to you as well and, and live with you, for they are the future of the church. Lord, we thank you and we pray for those who are sick, those in hospital or at home, wherever they may be, touch them. Pray especially for Elaine Jacobson and that she's suffering with cancer. Be with her, Lord. We think of Mary Anderson, who's gone to hospital. She had an accident and broke two ankles. And Lord, be with her and give her strength. We pray too for all of Barrent, as uh, we have a memorial service on Tuesday. Give her comfort and peace, her and her family. Lord, we pray for those who are shut in, those who can't come out that you'd be with them, that they would feel your presence as well. We think especially of Orwell Borgeson, and uh, we thank you that you've given him another year of life, Lord. He hopes to celebrate his 91st birthday tomorrow. Lord, we pray too for those who serve you as missionaries who are involved in mission work, and we lift up Alan Yam this morning, that you would be with him that he would overcome the difficulties and the obstacles that he runs into, especially concerning travel and so on. And Lord, help him defeat 
the evil one wherever he raises his, his head. We thank you for the leadership in this church. We thank you for Pastor Wayne. Will you be with him this morning, Lord, as he brings us the message? And may our ears and our hearts be open that we would hear what you have to tell us. We thank you for the elders and we pray for them, that you would grant them wisdom. And Lord, we pray too that there would be men that would step forward to serve as elders in this new coming year and uh, that they would be willing to serve you as leadership in this church. And also for counsel, we need positions there, Lord. Touch the hearts of those who are contemplating serving that they would step forward. We thank you for the search committee and we pray for the work that they do in finding a pastor. Lord, we pray that we would find the pastor that you have chosen to be the shepherd here at First Baptist. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with us together as we continue to sing? In Christ alone Stone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of God. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of
Till he returns or calls me home. Till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Now we get to sing forever about our exalted King who is reigning forever. Let's sing together. He is exalted. exalted the king is exalted on high i will praise him he is exalted forever exalted and i I'm getting pretty good at this. <laughs> Another two weeks and I hope I don't need to. Well, good morning, everyone. You know, several years ago, Reed and I had the privilege of uh, taking a small group from our church in Cranbrook, where I pastored at the time, on a tour of the Holy Land. And, uh, you know, one of the, the most surreal parts of that whole journey for me was uh, sitting in the, uh, around uh, the garden tomb, whereas the, uh, one of the proposed sites that Jesus was buried. And I'll never forget um, how it felt, you know, as I imagined 
what, must, what it must have been like to be there with the disciples on that first Easter Sunday when they met the risen Lord. Well, we we're on that trip. Uh, we had flown out of Calgary, and so while we we're on the trip, I had parked my Ford excursion at a hotel near the airport, and when we arrived back in Calgary, it was minus 23 degrees. And of course, my truck hadn't been plugged in the whole time we were away, and when I went to start it, it was dead. You know, I had a, I had a full tank of fuel, my engine oil was good, I had plenty of washer fluid, my tires were almost new. In fact, everything else was in good condition, except the battery was dead, there was no power. And so with no power to turn the engine over, my truck was just, it was like a big boat anchor. It was pretty much useless, right? You know, and you might wonder what that has to do with Easter Sunday, with Resurrection Sunday. But the Bible tells us that that is exactly what our lives are like apart from knowing Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are born into the world with a sinful nature and we are dead spiritually. Everything might look fine on the outside, but on the inside there's no life. And most people in the world don't even realize the condition that they're in. I know when I was growing up, I certainly didn't. I thought that I was fine. If you asked me, I would have said that I believed in God. I came from a good family. I was a good person. I did all the, the right things. I stayed out of trouble. My family celebrated Christmas and Easter. And so I felt like if there was a God, then I was okay with him. And I hope that when I died, if there was a heaven, then I might have a place there. You know, I think many of us in our culture grow up and go through life exactly the same way. We depend on being good, on obeying the rules and doing what we think will make God happy. But that's not what the Bible says. You know, and that's the way the Apostle Paul lived before he met the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. But that encounter made him realize that's not what it takes. And that's the message that Paul gives us in Philippians chapter 3. And, and Paul begins chapter 3 in Philippians by listing all of the reasons that he had to be confident that he was on the right path and in a right standing before God. Being a Jew, Paul, or Saul, was he, as he was known before he met Jesus, Saul had everything that might have given him God's favor and a truly joyful life. He had the right heritage. He'd been circumcised as a Jew. He had the credentials. He had the education. He had the position, the power, the money, the dedication, and the blameless life. But then in Philippians chapter 3, Paul says this. He says, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. In other words, whatever good things I had going for me, I considered them as being worthless. And then he continues in verse 8. He says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. All the things that Paul's, in Paul's life that should have counted for something, he says, were really nothing compared to the value of knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection. In fact, he says that all of those things were rubbish. You know, and actually that word um, rubbish really doesn't carry the weight of what Paul is trying to say here. Most English translations tend to water down the meaning and they soften it from what the original Greek word that he used. 
the English Standard Version, the one that I'm using, translates, translates it as rubbish. The NIV says garbage. Another translation says trash. One says filth. What I, and I think that's getting a little closer to the original meaning. I, I really think the King James Version, if you use that version, I think that translates it the best in my mind. The King James Version says dung. Dung. But even that is toned down from the vulgarity of this word that Paul uses. And so you get the idea of what Paul is saying here. Dung, you know the stuff that comes out of the back end of an animal? You know, I'm not going to say the word, but you know what it is. You know, and that's, Paul is so emphatic about those things that that's the word that he uses when he talks about the righteousness that he used to depend on. He says, that's what the self-righteous like is, life is like, and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. He says, I give that all up so that I can know Christ and the power of his resurrection. You know, and all those things that we might consider good and beneficial, all those things that, that we might think earn us God's favor without knowing Christ and the power of the resurrection are as useless as all those things on my truck were at 23 below. The tank full of fuel, the all-terrain tires, the synthetic motor oil, the washer fluid with a minus 40 rating. Without the power to turn the engine over and bring it to life, it's all dead and meaningless. And, and that's the way that our lives are without Christ and the power of the resurrection in it. And what mattered most to Paul and should matter to every one of us is knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection. Now, before we get too far into talking about that power and what it is, it's important to understand why the resurrection of Christ was even necessary in the first place. Why did Jesus have to be raised from the dead? Why did God choose to reveal his power through the resurrection of Christ? Remember what Jesus told Pontius Pilate about why he had come into the world. In John chapter 18, Verse 37, Jesus said to Pilate, I was born for this and I've come into the world for this, to testify to the truth. And so the resurrection of Christ was to validate and prove the truth of what Jesus preached and taught. In John chapter 2, we read about a confrontation that Jesus had with some Jewish leaders. And, and the Jews asked Jesus about his authority. Where did you get your authority they asked him. They wanted a sign as proof that Jesus was who he said he was. But Jesus told them that the sign that he would give them would be to raise up the temple after it had been destroyed. Jesus wasn't talking about the temple in Jerusalem. In fact, John says later in chapter 2, he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. They believed the words of Jesus to be true because of the resurrection. Jesus was telling them, uh, the, the Pharisees, that if they wanted proof of who he was and what he'd been sent to do, all they had to do was to wait and see. And the resurrection is not only the proof that we need to know that Jesus Sorry, the resurrection is the only proof that we need to know that Jesus spoke the truth and was the truth. If what Jesus has said regarding his resurrection hadn't come true, then he really had no claim to any authority or any truth. If he stayed in the grave, Jesus couldn't save anyone. Without the resurrection, he was just a phony and a liar. And that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. But if in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Because of his resurrection, we can be sure that what Jesus said and who he claimed to be was true in every respect. There could be no greater proof and Jesus promises that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. 
You know, if somebody claims to, to have the authority to give eternal life and then rises from the grave, I'd say that's pretty good evidence that they have the power over death and what they promise is true. You know, there's been others throughout history that have claimed to have the answers to life, but no one else has claimed to have the answers to death and then overcome death to prove it. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Confucius, not even science. Only Jesus has proven that he has the power to overcome death. And so the resurrection was to show the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if what Jesus said is true and his resurrection is a testimony to that truth, let's talk about the implications of the resurrection. What does the power of the resurrection mean for us personally? For one thing, it confirms that Christ's death was effective in providing the forgiveness of sins. The Bible tells us that Jesus offered himself on, a cro- on the cross as a, a sacrifice to pay for the sin of humanity, and the resurrection is evidence that his sacrifice was sufficient. In Romans chapter 4, verses 24 and 25, it says, If faith, or it faith will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for, for our trespasses and raised for our justification. When the Father raised Jesus from the dead, it was verification that the sacrifice that he made on the cross was acceptable in the Father's sight. It was affirmation that all those who believe in Jesus and his work on the cross are made right with God. They are justified. And those who place their faith in the resurrected Christ have their sins forgiven. Because apart from a risen Savior, there is no evidence of salvation. And if Jesus had remained in the grave, we would have no assurance that his death accomplished anything. But his resurrection is the evidence of forgiveness and the effectiveness of his work on the cross. And so as you sit here today, or if you're watching online, if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, let me assure you that you have had your sins forgiven because Jesus was raised from the dead. Christ is alive and it's knowing him and the power of his resurrection that Paul hungers and thirsts for and and that's what he's willing to exchange everything else in life for is to know Jesus Christ in a personal way and to know the power of his resurrection. Second, knowing the risen Christ and the power of his resurrection is what gives us hope for our own resurrection. It's because Jesus was raised from the dead and is the living Lord that we know that life beyond the grave is what lies ahead for us. Death is not the end for those who know Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says... God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. That's the same resurrection power that will raise us up as raise Jesus up. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 and 21, it says, In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. And again, in Verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. Because Jesus overcame the grave, we too shall rise from the dead. Death no longer has power over us because Christ is alive. Finally, when we think about what the power of the resurrection means for us. You know, we we most often think of the future in terms of, you know, that glorious day when we'll be raised 
from the dead to spend eternity in heaven. And that is what we have to look forward to, but the, the resurrection power isn't just for the future and the promise of eternal life in heaven. It's for life here and now, this very day. Because Christ's resurrection has given us the victory over sin and death in this life that we're living right now. And that's what the baptisms that we witnessed earlier represented. That was what they illustrated. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4 through 7 says, We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. And so everyone who puts their faith in Christ has died with Christ in a spiritual sense. Our old self, the sinful nature within us, was put to death. And that's what being immersed under the water symbolizes. We have been crucified with Christ, but we have also been raised to new life through the power of the resurrection. We are new creations. We have been born again and given new life here and now. That's what the resurrection power does. It's at work in us today. And instead of being enslaved to the power of sin and being powerless to walk in righteousness, you have the power to resist temptation. You have the power to overcome fear. You have the power to endure trials. You have the power that makes you strong in your weakness. You have the power to go and share the gospel and to serve wherever it is that God calls you. You have the power of the resurrection working in your life right now. You have the power to accomplish the things that God has for you and the power of the resurrection to overcome whatever the enemy places in your way. Paul knew that the living Christ was the source and the power that enabled him while he was sitting in prison It enabled him to endure the difficulties that surrounded him and to live the victorious life that Christ had come to give. It's not through our own strength or anything that we do that we can live live a life pleasing to God. It's not through our own wisdom that we can live a transformed life. It's not by our own abilities that we can be the father or the mother or the husband or the wife or the son or the daughter that God would have us be. It's not by our own power that we can do anything of any real significance. It's only by knowing Christ and the power of the resurrection. And for Paul, the Christian life, indeed life at all, isn't simply a matter of working hard or living a good life or doing the right things. For Paul, The only thing of value in life is knowing the living Christ that had met him on the Damascus Road and knowing the life-giving power of the resurrection that begins today. For him, having a personal relationship with the resurrected Christ meant everything. Nothing else mattered. For knowing Christ meant knowing the power of Christ's resurrection, the resurrection that had proven the truth of the gospel, that had confirmed the victory over sin and death, that gave him the assurance that his sin was forgiven, that gave him the hope of life beyond the grave, that made it possible for him to live a life of joy and abundance, and that gave him freedom even when he was in bondage and empowered him to do all that God had called him to do. So my question is, what about you today? If you know Christ, I hope you also know the power that his resurrection 
gives you and you are living in the reality of that today. I hope that you are doing everything you can to grow in your relationship with Christ so that you might fully know his love and his grace toward you. If you don't know Christ, if you're here and and you have never made that commitment of faith to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't have the assurance of the power of his resurrection and the promise of eternal life, then I want to invite you to make that decision today. And after the service, come and find me at the front of the sanctuary or, or one of the elders, a couple of the elders will be here as well. And we'll pray with you. Don't wait. Don't put off knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection today. Heavenly Father, we come today to reflect and to celebrate what you have done for us in Christ. Jesus, you came into this world. God became man and lived as one of us and died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And Father, you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day as a testimony to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power that you have over all of creation, the power that you have over death. And this is our hope, our hope for eternity and our hope for today. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand as we sing our closing song? Pastor Wayne found the perfect song for us to close called Resurrection Power. We're going to start with a chorus. Now I have resurrection power Living on the inside of Jesus You have given us freedom I'm no longer bound by sin and dark Living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away. The in your royalty your Holy Spirit lives in me I see my past has been redeemed the new has come now I have resurrection power living on the inside you have given us freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom, my chains are gone. Freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom, hallelujah. Freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom, my chains are gone. Freedom, you have given us freedom. 
is that Jesus, you have given us freedom. Now no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. Now I have resurrection power, living on the inside of Jesus, you have given us I want to close this after this morning with a, a prayer of the Apostle Paul's found in Ephesians chapter 3. This is what Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, but also I want to pray it for you. I pray that out of his glorious riches that God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Happy Easter.